If you do not have a system to plan out your week yet, I've got you covered. (laughs) Today, I'm going to actually break down my personal process on how I plan out each week on Friday mornings for the week ahead. So I want you to grab your favorite beverage, get ready to take some notes, and I hope you enjoy this process. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. Now, I mentioned that my personal process is to plan out my week for the week ahead on Friday mornings. I do this because it just works best for me. I know you will hear a lot of people giving advice that they plan out their whole week. They take time on Sundays to sit down and prepare for the week ahead. And if that works for you, that is great. You're going to have to find what works best for you. So I just want to say that right off the bat, that if Friday morning doesn't work for you, that's okay. If Sunday doesn't work for you, that's still okay. You need to find what day works best for you and your life. Personally, for me, I love Friday mornings because it is a good end to the week. I get to sit down early in the morning. This is part of my morning routine on Fridays. And I get to sit down and look at my week ahead. And I like this for a couple of reasons, really. I like going into the weekend without any stress, knowing that I know what's coming. Like, I don't have to worry about trying to make time on the weekends to feel prepared. I I end up getting a little bit anxious if I skip this process. So I go into my weekend being able to really enjoy my weekend because I feel prepared for the week ahead. And secondly, because I took the time to do it on Friday mornings, I then have my weekends to have my weekend. (laughs) I don't have to worry about carving out time to make this plan or to do any tasks. I really try to focus my weekends now to just enjoy life and not worry about all the things that need to get done because now that I have a system set up with my routines, I more often than not can get everything that I need to be done, done during the week. Even though we're working, even though we're going to the gym and filling our days and we have very, um, very full (laughs) lives and we are still able to do a lot of these things during the week because of the systems we have in place with our routines. So hopefully we can get you to that point too, where you can start to have more time in your weekends to just really enjoy things. So I personally would recommend if you can carve out time during your week, um, try to do that because then it leaves your weekends and you go into the weekend feeling very prepared. So even if you have to do it on like a Thursday or maybe it's even in the evenings, maybe it's not an early morning that you can do it, then you could definitely do it in the evenings too. But what I um, do before I go into my actual breakdown I wanted to just mention that it's going to sound like a lot and I don't want this to sound overwhelming because there are a lot of steps, but I really wanted to give you the steps so as you're walking through this on your own, you don't get stuck anywhere. So if you kind of look at my process, I really have two different things. I do use a Google Calendar. And I also have a paper planner, but they kind of serve different purposes for me, even though they are showcasing similar things. So I use my Google Calendar for my schedule. Anything time sensitive, if somebody is uh, asking me my availability, if I am plugging anything into the calendar because we just committed to something anything like that, it does not go in my paper planner when I'm scheduling those things. That is not where it goes. Anytime I am booking something, it is going in my Google calendar. Okay. So this is where my schedule runs off of. So if anything drops, it's going to be my paper planner because everything time sensitive is in my Google calendar. And then I know that I'm not 
missing something somewhere because I years ago I used to, you know, schedule something and I would just jot it down in my paper planner thinking I'll just add it to my Google calendar later. And then all of a sudden I would double book myself or I would forget about something and all of it, like it was just kind of a mess. And it goes for the same thing for my Google calendar. I would go off of my paper planner and I would forget to move something from my Google calendar into my paper planner. And if I'm going off my paper planner, then I'm going to forget something because I'm not looking at my Google calendar. So I just want to say first and foremost, choose one that everything gets scheduled into and stick to that. My personal preference is the Google calendar because I can access it on any device. So I can just log into my Gmail account if I need to on my computer, on my phone, Uh, And I pretty much have my phone with me at all times where if something comes up and I need to schedule something, I know what my schedule is because it is at my fingertips. I don't always have my paper planner with me. So that is what I have decided to do and how I have been working my planning process. So I would encourage you to do the same because that is, it does make the most sense because you're probably not going to have your paper planner with you at all times. So my paper planner, you might think, well, then what's the purpose of a paper planner? And this one is more of my creative outlet. It gives me the time to get organized and prepare for the week ahead and ensure that my week flows as smoothly as possible as I'm looking at my upcoming week. So my Google Calendar is all the time. Like I can look out months and months and months ahead of time. My paper planner only goes one week at a time. I do not do anything moving forward in my paper planner until I'm sitting down to plan out that week. Every time I sit down to plan out my week, I am opening it up to a blank week. So I hope that helps kind of explain the purpose of both. But I just really love this process of being able to go off my Google Calendar, but having the the time to sit and just plan out the flow of my week in my paper planner. It's very therapeutic and I absolutely love it. So the breakdown of how I do this is number one, (laughs) we're going to review my Google Calendar. Well, we're not going to review my Google Calendar, but that is the number one thing I do is review my Google Calendar. So if you have not set up your Google Calendar the way that I have um kind of gone through in a previous episode. That was episode 34. And I did talk about how I use a paper planner and a Google calendar effectively to get organized and get things done in that episode. But basically what I did is Google, if you are not familiar with the Google calendar, you can use others too, but I just really love the Google Calendar. I think it's super user friendly. It's very easy to use. You can use it on Apple or like Androids. It's just um it's just a really good calendar and it is free. Um but you can create multiple calendars under one account. So for instance, I have Uh, a personal calendar, I have a work calendar, I have a time block calendar that I actually took um, the template that I created from episode 11. I walk you through how to create a flexible daily schedule template. So that was has more detail. And I created that template. I went through that exercise, created that template, and then put it into a time block calendar And then what's really cool is it might sound really confusing that you have multiple calendars, but you can just make sure they're all checked and they all appear on the same calendar. But what you can do is just uncheck the the certain ones and it will remove them from your calendar. So when I do this, I actually normally have my time block calendar unchecked so that I can't see that and it's not, you know, messing up my schedule. But when it's my planning process, I check the box to show my time blocks because that is my goal. That is my ideal time of flowing through my day. And that's my ideal day stack. So when I check the box to view my um, Google Calendar. So I review my personal calendar, my work calendar, everything. I review that against my time blocks. Then I move to step two, where I start restacking my time blocks to fit 
with my day. So this is where you really need to prioritize what is important to you. So if I have created extra commitments, I know that something needs to give and I have to choose at that point if I need to cancel the appointment or the event or maybe reduce it down and not spend so much time on it or whatever the situation is. If I think that, you know, my time block of going to the gym is more important or if going to the gym can get shifted and maybe it can move to the morning in a time block in the morning. So this is where um, it's a little bit easier if you can see it visually, but basically you are just restacking the time blocks in Google Calendar to shift so that everything lines up and you don't have anything being double booked so that you know you have made enough time for all of your commitments and your priorities or chosen between the two. Because what happens is if you don't do this, then something is going to fall to the wayside when you're in your week and you might be really upset and you might feel really stressed because you feel like you don't have enough time to get everything done because you don't have everything have time to get everything done. So doing this ahead of time really gives you the the ability to plan this out and really make sure that your day is going to flow in the way that you truly want it to. So once you take the time to visually see your time, your like day stack, your priority, your time blocks against your actual schedule, then you have your actual day stack in a digital form. So now what we're going to do is you if you if the paper planner is overwhelming for you, you could stop there. Now that you have it stacked in your Google Calendar, you could stop there and know that you have a day stack that works for you, you're comfortable with that and you move on with your day. And then that's it. But if you want the extra like creative and more like therapeutic side of things, then you're going to move on to number 3. And this is where I open up my paper planner and like I said, I'm opening it up to a blank week and I make sure that my week is separated the way that I want. So basically, um, I use a vertical planner and my favorite planner, I was going to actually wait to do this episode until closer to the launch date of the new 2025 planners, but... I was excited and I wanted to release this episode early. So my um, favorite planner is the Dream Planner by Horatio Printing. And their new 2025 planners are coming out September 24th. And I do have a link in the show notes. I think if you scroll down, you can get to the link for my favorite planner. And you can use my code, which is an affiliate link. And it is uh, a code that gets you 15% off. And that's just Renee 15. So it's R-E-N-A-E-1-5. And that will get you a discount on that planner if you want to. But I use the leather book bound version of the vertical planner. And I really like the vertical because it visually lets me stack my day similar to how I view it in my Google Calendar. And it just works for my brain better that way. So I like to, in this step, make sure that the day is broken up into four sections. So they have vertical lines that break up each of the weekdays or weekends, all of the days. So it's vertical columns. And what I do is I just like draw three horizontal lines across the week to break it up into four blocks. So the the top one we're going to get to later. That's going to be a task, <laughs> um, a task block, but just ignore that one for now. The second block is what I use for 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. The third block is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So it's a little bit longer. And then the fourth block is after 5 p.m. And the reason I do this this way is because that's what works best for my schedule. If your schedule doesn't flow um, into these boxes, then you might want to choose what works best for you or break up your day in a way that works best for you. I just like to visually see I kind of have my morning block, my day block, and my evening block. And then I move into step four. And once I have those 
blocks separated, I now grab a highlighter and I just go through my day and I highlight just a line for each of the things that are flowing through my day. And I do this, like I said, I have the vertical planner and I use just like the left half of the column for each day because I do something else um, in a little bit. So basically I use a color coding system with my routines and my priorities. So I use teal for my morning routine. I use pink for my business. I use gray for my work for my full-time job. Orange is my movement. So this is like gym, walks, things like that. Um, blue is anything meal planning related. So it would be, you know, dinner, grocery shopping, um, meal prep. All of those things are in blue. Yellow is my daily seven home routine. Red is our budget review. Purple is task time, dedicated task time. And anything time sensitive, like appointments or events, anything like that is in green. So when I am go, and I should just mention too, I had previously set up these color coordinating um, things for these categories in when I was creating my template for my time blocks in Google. So they actually match all of these colors. So it's very visually easy to see that as I'm looking at my Google Calendar, I can just transfer right to my paper planner with the same color because that is what is in there. So it just makes it super easy. And so what I do is I just go on the left side of the column and I just start writing lines. I don't worry about writing anything. I'm just doing highlighting. So if I look at my Google calendar and I look at it at a week at a time and I see that the first thing on every day is my morning routine, I will just take my teal highlighter and go on the very top of that that second block for that is the 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. So the first time block, I should say, um, I just do at the very top, I just do a line on the top of each one of those days. And I will come back to the rest later, but then I go to the next thing. And usually after my morning routine is my business time. So then I'll go with a pink line and I do that. And then I have my walk with our dog. And so then I bring out my orange marker and I do that line and I stack it because these are all happening before 9 a.m. And so then once I do that, then I'll do like my work block for my full-time job. Now, because I work full-time nine to five uh, and my gray marker, my gray highlighter is work, I will actually do a line at the top of that second time block. So that 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. block, I do a line at the top of it and I do a line at the bottom of it. And then I just do two vertical lines to connect just the sides. So I end up with this like full work block in there, but I have like open space in there too. And so once I do this with the whole week and I plan everything out um, and just a couple of little side notes as I'm doing this, if it's going to be like an hour or less, I just do a single line. If it's longer than an hour, then I do what I did similar to my, my work block where I'll do a top line, a bottom line, and then just do two vertical lines on the sides to connect it into like a little like shaded box. And that is what I end up doing um, if it's longer than an hour, just so I can visually see that it takes up a larger portion of my day. And, and then as I'm doing all of this on the right side is if I'm doubling up any time frames. So like, for instance, if I have my work block from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's taking up that whole left side column, but I'm on my lunch break, I'm planning to do my daily seven home routine, then I will pull out my yellow marker and on the right side of that column, I will do about halfway through, which is about my lunchtime, I will just do a yellow line because that's going to be my daily seven home routine. So it's happening at the same time, but it's stacked in there with it. So I can just visually see how my day is going to flow based on these colors. And it does take a little bit of time for your mind to start 
thinking about it and correlating the colors to what you're doing. But it when you start to repeat it over and over, it does happen very quickly where you just know exactly what you're doing. So then I move on to step five, which is once everything is highlighted and stacked how I want it to be, then I write in with pen and I just write right over the top of the highlighter. And I usually am sticking to my main like five foundational routines, my work time and my events. That is what is in my calendar here. I don't really do like small tasks. It's more of my bigger routines, like my chunks. And so I will make sure everything is written in on top of those highlighters. And I just want to mention too that everything, like even the time sensitive stuff that is events and um, maybe appointments, things like that, they don't have times listed. And this is on purpose because I don't want to be going through my day relying on my paper planner. It's literally just for the flow of my day. So I know what comes first, what comes next, and where my time should be focused because my time for the actual time frame of when things are scheduled for, that again is in my Google Calendar. So I don't need to worry about putting the time of these things. And then um, once I do that, I go to step six, which is now that my whole week is done, I'm going to review my annual task list to see what it is I need to be done this week. So if you go back to episode 48, this is how to create an annual task list to get stuff done without feeling overwhelmed. This is like that big list. It's not your daily seven home routine. It's all the other stuff. And so when you do that, you're going to break everything down into months. So when I'm looking at this, I actually usually um, like at the end of the month, I will go and take a sticky note and write down all the tasks on that month that are ready to be done. And I actually have it in the month of my paper planner of what I'm going to be working on. So I just have a smaller list of all of my annual tasks for the month. So then I review that that list and I just pull however many I need. So if I have 20 tasks on that monthly task list that need to be done this month, then I know if it's four weeks in the month, I know I need to accomplish five of those each week to break it up evenly throughout my month to make sure that I get everything done and I don't feel overwhelmed. So as I'm doing this, I'm pulling those tasks in and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I am picking just three priorities for the week. So these are like, if all else fails, I will be super happy if just these three things get done. And so I write those three priorities on, if you get the same planner as me on the very left side, there is just an open column that is not part of the week. It's just a separate open column. That is where I put my three priorities. And then any remaining tasks I put, remember we had kept that very top block across the top of each day and we left that open and that is where I will plug in any additional tasks that need to be done on the days that I want to do them. And I will just put them up there with a little checkbox and make sure that in my day stack, I have a, a purple line for dedicated task time. So maybe it's throughout the week. It's like sprinkled throughout the week where I know I'm going to have some task time to work on these projects. Maybe it is just a chunk of like two full hours that I'm just going to hammer through all of them on one day and just get them all done. It just depends on how that week works out. But that is a, a way that I can plug the tasks into my week to make sure that I am prioritizing all of the time that I want to and making sure that my, my week flows how I want while still getting the things done that I need without getting overwhelmed. And then um, the seventh thing is a little bit different. Um, I don't actually do this in my planner because I do this separately, but if you're wanting one spot to do it, there is room at the very bottom of these planners because there's a lot of margin space. So it's really cool. You can kind of create your own system, but there is t uh, room at the very bottom that you could easily plug in your meal plan or even just dinners um, to make sure that you have everything in there and you could just write in your dinners there. I personally do it on our menu calendar 
And that is in episode 47, where I walk you through my meal planning routine. And you can copy it if you want. You can just make it your own. But that is what I do. So even though I kind of go through this process, and a lot of times I will do it at the same time, but I don't necessarily always do it at the same time, but that could be a, a weekly planning process. Um, typically, I actually plan out our meal planning um, like on Thursday because I can see, but as you're doing this, it might be very useful to do it on that Friday morning and just write down the dinners because then you are in it and you can see how your day flows. So you can make sure that if you, it's a really busy day, you're going to need an easier dinner or something that's already prepped or something that you had thrown in the freezer already that's cooked or, or ready to be cooked. Or if you have a little bit more open space, you can be a little more adventurous or have, you know, take a little more time to make dinner. So that is definitely something you can think about doing. Um, but that is my whole process. And it sounds like a lot, but I guarantee you, like in the beginning, it did take me a while because I was kind of tweaking and figuring out what I really liked about this and what I needed to change. And I did make some tweaks throughout the process, but I found something that I just really love and it flows really smoothly. And it while it took a lot longer in the beginning to kind of get used to this whole routine, once I have everything set up and I go into the process, it literally takes me like five minutes to go through and do everything, even the color coding and everything. It is such a quick process and I feel so calm and so relaxed and so prepared going into my next week that it just feels like something I cannot stop doing because it just it relieves so much pressure and you just go into your weekend being able to really enjoy the weekend because you don't feel stressed about making sure you're ready for the week ahead. So it's really a good process that has been tremendously helpful for me. <laughs> so I hope it is helpful for you and that even if you don't do my whole process that you can take some of these little nuggets and use them in your own uh, weekly planning routine. But no matter what way you do it, the, the biggest thing is to make sure that you are preparing for the week ahead in a very simple way um, that makes you feel really empowered for your week ahead. And I will note um, just a couple of things that my use of highlighters and pens is dramatically different because I use erasable ones. And if you have a little extra money to throw at new highlighters and pens, you will not be sorry. I absolutely love them. And it makes it less scary when you're writing in a paper planner because you can easily just erase it if you need to. So it's not a big deal. Um, but I personally use the Pilot Friction erasable highlighters and I use the pastel ones because they're not as bright um, and bold. Like they're easy to write over. And then I also use the Pilot Friction erasable pens and I have several different sizes, like the, the tip sizes. And I have found that I really enjoy the super fine tip ones. I think they're like at zero three. I think I had zero five and I think the zero three are even finer and you can look it up and see what you like but I really like the really fine ones with those highlighters and they just make the whole process so much easier and so much more fun and less stressful when you're worried about making sure your planner looks pretty. <laughs> So those are just some tips for you, but uh, I will do a really quick recap on these steps and then you might want to go and listen back and just kind of walk through this whole thing. But I definitely recommend kind of looping back to those episodes I mentioned if you want to get this all kind of set up and flowing. But the number one thing that you want to do is just figure out what works best for you. And if this becomes what works best for you, great. If it's not, then find something that works best for you. But I have found that this just works really, really, really well for me. Okay, so a really quick recap of that breakdown on how I plan out my week to stay organized is number one, I review my Google Calendar. Number two, I restack that calendar against my time blocks to make sure that my day is flowing smoothly and it is stacked in a way that isn't going to double book me. 
And then number, and I have to prioritize at that time too. Number three is that I open my paper planner and then I separate my week into four blocks. So at the top, I open a space for tasks and then I do three additional blocks underneath. And I personally do 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then after 5 p.m. Step four, I begin highlighting in each day the order of how I have my day set up with my day stacks, comparing it to my Google Calendar. So I look at my Google Calendar. It's sitting on the side of me and I'm looking at it on my phone, usually in a weekly view. And then I grab my highlighter and I do the same color and I just stack it out so it looks the same in my paper planner. And I personally use a color coding and a really quick recap of that is teal is my morning routine, pink is business, gray is work for my full-time job, orange is movement, blue is anything related to meal planning, yellow is my daily seven home routine, red is budget, purple is dedicated task time, and green is anything time sensitive like appointments or events. And then uh, step five, once everything is highlighted and stacked how I would like it to be, I then write in the actual things. So if it's a morning routine, I write in morning routine on the, the actual highlighted section. And I personally like to stick to my main five foundational routines of morning routine, my uh, meal planning routine, my daily seven home routine, movement routine, and budget routine. And then like work, business time, and anything time sensitive, but you have to use what works best for you. And then step six is to review my annual task list to see what tasks need to be done this week. And then I pick three priorities that I want to focus on that I want to get done first. And I put those in the very left side column or wherever you have space in your paper planner if you have a different planner than me. And then I plug in the remaining tasks into that task section we left open in whatever day works best to accomplish those tasks. And then step seven is optional, but there is room at the bottom of this planner, but you can probably find room in in your planner somewhere if you want to plan out the dinners. And you can do that based on how your day is flowing and how much time you have so you know what type of dinner you need to plan for. And that is a really quick recap of that breakdown. I hope that you found this helpful and not too confusing. (laughs) If it is too confusing, I am so sorry. And I will try and make it simpler if you need me to. But um, hopefully you can just kind of take this while it's quiet and you can really sit down and think about it and plan out your day and you find that these um, episodes that you can go back and build this routine into are super helpful for you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and I will talk to you on the next episode. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.